you should reach out to some of the medical schools, whether it's the school you're at now for your, your master's program or any other schools that you are planning to apply to, and just tell them your story a little bit, right? I, I did undergrad mm-hmm. a decade ago. Uh, my prereqs were back then. Maybe I didn't know I wanted to be a doctor then. I didn't do really well. I'm in a master's program now. I'm doing well. Do I need those prereqs? Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Yeah, excited. Excited, go Gators. Yes, go Gators. <laughs> um, FSU fans are listening. Yeah, <laughs> FSU who, what? Um, let's talk about what I can do for you today. What are you struggling with? What, what questions do you have for me? Okay, well, um, so I am a non-trad, which is probably like 90% of the people that talk to you. <laughs> uh, and uh, I actually did my undergrad um, over about a decade ago. Um, very, very low GPA. And um, I, mean, I actually, uh, a couple years ago, I made a decision I want to go back and try for med school. Okay. The, uh, I took some classes at community college. It's a long, long-winded story, but... Um, I did well enough where I contacted the director of our master's program that I'm in now. And, um, and she said, well, you know, I think we have a spot for you. Um, because they, they aren't based on GPA. It's based on a uh, case by case basis. Essentially. Uh, They gave you the number 3.0. I don't know if that's a scary or whatever, but so I'm in the master's program and it's, it's an anatomy based program, which I love. And that, you know, it's, uh, I don't think I ever got an A in a science class in undergrad. And uh, <laughs> the, closest, the closest I got was a B plus in anatomy. Okay, I guess because when you enjoy something, you do well. Yep. Uh, it's very anatomy based and uh, a lot of pathology as well. So mm-hmm. like system based. And I'm wondering, um, the prereqs are over a decade ago for myself uh, and they weren't very good. Yep. So I'm wondering if it would be beneficial for me if I were to take those prereqs, whether at the current school I'm in now or at community college or, or wherever, um, I know that the MCAT can kind of represent your prereqs a little bit because the subjects are the same, but it's very superficial compared to the coursework. And I know like it's, it's not the same essentially. Yeah. So really the question comes down to, should you repeat your prereqs? Yes. Yeah. Even though I'm in a special master's program that's uh, specialized. So anatomy based yeah. instead of your typical special master's program, which is like medical sciences in general. Yeah. What do you think you want to do? I, I don't want to take classes with uh, <laughs> eighteen-year-olds. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Um, I you, that two years ago, so <laughs> you don't want to be the old guy in the room. Um, well, it's interesting. I'm actually the oldest person in my masters as well. They um, they have this joke. They call me the Rob Father. <laughs> the Rob Father. Nice. So here's the question. Really, it comes down to number one. Are the medical schools that you are going to apply to, are they going to have any issues with older prereqs? And then number two, what is your foundational knowledge for the MCAT, right? This this silly test that you have to take to get into medical school. So when you look at those two questions, really one has to be answered by someone else, right? You, you should reach out to some of the medical schools, whether it's the school you're at now for your, your master's program or any other schools that you are planning to apply to and just tell them your story a little bit, right? I, I did undergrad mm-hmm. a decade ago. Uh, my prereqs were back then. Maybe I didn't know I wanted to be a doctor then. I didn't do really well. I'm in a master's program now. I'm doing well. Do I need those prereqs or do you are you going to just use my master's program, my MCAT score, et cetera? So I would, I would go right to the horse's mouth and, and go ask them, right? Ask a few schools and see what the general consensus is. Mm-hmm. After that, I would probably start digging into the MCAT and, and seeing what that prep is like uh, with the knowledge that you're getting now through the master's program, with the knowledge that you've gained previously from your undergrad and everything else that you've done, will it be easy enough to take some sort of course maybe or self-study with a set of books to relearn that material in enough depth to do well on the MCAT? And right, and remember the, 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 the motto of the MCAT is a mile wide, an inch deep. You don't have to know a ton for the MCAT, 
Well, you have to know a ton, but you don't have to know a lot about that ton, right? <laughs> Just very superficial stuff about a lot of stuff. And so retaking the courses probably will over-prepare you for the MCAT uh, when maybe all you need to do is retake or, or uh, read some books or, or take a course that will have some video content, et cetera, to help you relearn that content and then use practice tests and QBanks to really drive home the the studying to the finish line. And so ultimately, that's really my line of thinking. Uh, having been out of undergrad for so long, you're in a SMP now, so you're proving academically that you can do what you need to do. The, the, the biggest question for me is whether schools are okay with that, and probably they're fine with it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so what do you think based on that? Uh, what do I think? No, I think it's right. I mean, um, we, we try not to be number based, but I think you, uh, you still need the base amount good enough, I suppose. So if if let's say schools are accepting my master's over my undergrad, because it's it's more representative and it's it's more recent, obviously, uh, then I guess the last piece of puzzle would be, well, the last two pieces would be my extracurricular and uh, the MCAT. And uh, I'm pretty confident in my extracurriculars, my MCAT. I have scheduled and I've been studying, but uh, I may need to. Um, depending on how the first round goes, I know. I know yeah. you like you like to be one and done. But, uh, <laughs> Everyone likes to be one and done with the MCAT. Right, exactly. But uh, if to apply the cycle, I mean, and and with the SMP, um, I mean, you're you're familiar with curriculum for for generic SMPs. Is that mm -hmm. the second semester, the spring semester, is always the most difficult. Mm. Um, and so studying for the MCAT while in the spring semester is is not recommended. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, but I do have it's a hard. schedule for May. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay. If not, uh, yeah, I'll be reaching out to the next step prep, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so with the SMP, uh, doing that and prepping for the MCAT, right, what, what you don't want to happen and what happens a lot is students let something falter, right? They, they drop one of the balls. So you're juggling everything that you're doing now, whether it's extracurriculars, SMP, MCAT, all of it, right? On top of a job sometimes too. And then something, something drops and hits the floor. And a lot of times it's grades. And so now all of a sudden you are in this SMP program, which for a lot of people is this last ditch effort to, to prove your worth to medical school, unfortunately. And then all of a sudden you're stumbling down on that. And so is there any recovery from that? Or your MCAT prep suffers, but students are so fixated on, I have to apply because I'm doing my SMP and I need to finish that and then apply to medical school so I can start medical school before I get any older. And their MCAT suffers, yet they still take the MCAT, they still apply with a bad MCAT, or they're not getting the extracurriculars they need, and now all of a sudden you have decent decent stats from your SMP, decent MCAT score, but the rest of the story isn't lining up with kind of your activities and your actions about you wanting to be a physician. So there are lots of things that have to be juggled, and at some point the question comes do I need to press pause on one of these things? And usually it's the MCAT uh, and just take it at a later date. And so as you go through this process, just continually check in with yourself. Am I letting something falter? Am I really doing myself more disservice than not by not taking a break with classes and MCAT and everything else? Uh, and, and should I ultimately just delay a year? Uh, I'm almost always of the answer that it's it's the right answer to delay a year than to continue to push through yeah i, I think i've been uh, discussing with friends and family that uh, at this point you know, i'm already the oldest in my class what's another year <laughs> yep yeah, yeah. So and and having year. that wisdom is good right having having that knowledge having that wisdom knowing that every year that you turn older is uh is, is not the end of the world. And and we're recording this on my birthday, so I'm another year older this today. Is it your birthday? It's oh, my birthday. birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Working on your birthday, huh? That's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. I worked in a lab and I hired this young girl. She was just finished her uh, undergrad and she was like, I can't believe I have to work on my birthday. I'm like, oh, honey, you get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> you get used to it. It's just another day. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. But um, yeah, so yeah, it's uh, it, I mean, it's not like I've stayed out of the science field. In my um, after undergrad, I, I want to I'll tell you my numbers. Uh, after undergrad, I graduated with a two point five GPA. Solid. And solid. So, yeah. It's a solid C plus right know, there. <laughs> and um, and it's just like I of the people I knew that went to med school, they were they were near perfect. I yeah. mean, I would get come back. I studied hard for a C. And someone says, "Oh, I got an A." You know, they didn't they didn't brag about it, but they got an A. And I'm like, and and when when it's like that, it's like you don't get mad at them; you get mad at yourself. Yeah. And it's just it's just a downward spiral. So towards the end of uh, undergrad, you know, I was a failure. It took me six years. Um, actually, sent an email to the one of the professors saying, "I know I have a D in the class. Um, is there anything I can do to make up for it?" And uh, he never responded to me and gave me a C. <laughs> so I graduated after six years. <laughs> Thank you. He's like, I'm yeah. done with you. Uh, get out of it, my man. class. I'll take it. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was very uh, unusual. But uh, I'll, it was after that. I just I thought I was a failure. Yeah, I gave up. On were my dreams. Were you pre med then? then? What was that? Were you pre med then? I, I was. You know, I, I was wasn't doing well in pre med. My first semester, I got a 1.7 with a drop, and I got it back up to a one two point seven. But uh, after that, I was like, maybe this isn't for me. So I tried engineering because I like math, and yeah. I got my butt kicked just as equally, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and without passion. You know, I got my butt kicked by someone I didn't know. Yeah. And uh, I tried uh, doing something a little more fun, like uh, doing film and things like mm. that. And eventually, I came back to microbiology, maybe yeah. something science related, and with the hopes of going to the medical field. Yeah. Uh, after thinking I was a failure for ten years, I um, something something clicked at work. My boss says, you know, we test medicine to make sure it's safe for people to use. We're helping people indirectly. At that point, it just clicked. I'm like, I don't want to help people indirectly. Yeah. So so, so let me ask you the question to, to see if maybe we can provide some value for someone listening to this. So well, starting yeah. off 1.7, uh, now you're in an SMP. Besides the years of wisdom and maybe a little bit more dedication and resolve to know that this is the right path for you, what do you think it was as you started undergrad that caused those early failures? Where where was the attention missing, or wh- what was missing in in your early undergrad years to to cause the bad grades? Uh, yeah, you can't you can't contribute it to the one thing. I mean, as you when you're young, you're 18, you want to go 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 and keep moving. Oh, I'm gonna be a doctor in my 30s. That's terrible. <laughs> I'm in my 30s now, and I'm still pre med, but. <laughs> It's, it's a lot of things. I mean, I was also extremely poor. I mean, the first three years of college, I slept on the floor in my sister's apartment. Um, and and now I'm, I'm an overrepresented minority. So, like, you're either perfect or you're not a doctor, you yeah. know? And so there's a lot of things you know, mentally. I that, let me, let me pause you right there. Yeah. Right? So, so that statement, you're either perfect or you're not a doctor, that was your assumption, right? That's not the that truth. Was absolutely my That assumption. was your assumption. Yeah. I mean, there, but there, there's no one to tell me otherwise. In fact, yeah. my high school advisor told me that, uh, you know, you won't get into the University of Florida because they're very uh, restrict on their requirements. Yeah. And one of their, you know, a great state school. And she told me, well, you know, this is actually what she said. She said, well, they're not really looking for Asians. You know, they're looking for like black and Hispanic. And I'm like, but my sister got in. And and she said he said she said that well her numbers were very very good, and, and I said well what were her numbers and she goes I can't really tell you that and then yep. she couldn't but yep. I'm like well I'm just gonna call her in like ten minutes after this yeah you know but the, but the idea was that you know something like that it, it sticks with you uh, I know a lot of people that have been on your show are very adamant well I'm not gonna listen to this guy I'm just gonna keep going or listen to this lady I'm like I'm just gonna keep going I, I didn't have that you know no one my a first generation college student. Uh, aside from my sister, mm-hmm. um, and I didn't have any motivation, and it, I, of that mindset, it was like it, it was already extremely difficult to get into UF. Now I have to be perfect for me to be a doctor because that's cream of the crop. Yeah, and so work, a stress, I was uh, disappointment in myself. Yeah, and I didn't even talk to the advisors in undergrad because I had already knew what they were going to say according to my numbers. Yeah, according to what my previous high school advisor said. So. Uh, at that point, it was just I took what I can get, and it was a, a job after undergrad, making eight dollars an hour, autoclaving trash. Mm. You know, so uh, ten years later, senior scientist in my lab, and I'm not happy still. Even you know, I checked all the boxes. You know, yep. I got a good job. I got a I got a, a beautiful wife who who takes care of me and is very smart and has you know has her degree. Um, she she's uh she's perfect. Yeah, but I wasn't. You know, and I, I need to. You don't have to be perfect, but you have to be happy. 
Yeah. And I was happy with everything but that. Yeah. Well, good. I, I think that's the perfect story um, to really highlight what I was talking about, about not having a plan B, because your plan B has turned into this life that you don't want and you're not happy, you're not settled and, and you want more, you want to go back to where you wanted to be and now you're making it happen. So continue yeah. continue pushing, continue making it happen. I actually just told her uh, what you say all the time is that my plan B is other things that help plan A. There you go. And she looked at me and she goes, <laughs> well, I mean, she wasn't, she wasn't on board at first with the whole med school. And I know like everyone says, oh yeah, my spouse was 100% supportive. Um, but that's that's not always the case, and I understand. You know, we have a we had a decent life after struggling for so long, that it was kind of hard to like switch gears. Yeah. And then she wasn't on board at first, but she understands, and and uh, and now she's she's uh, all in. Now she's already talking about being uh, a doctor wife. <laughs> doctor wife, nice. There are groups. There are Facebook groups for that. Uh, I so, yeah. Yeah. Well, awesome. I wish you the best of luck. Hopefully. Yes you figure out this path and and obviously figure out the best way to prepare for the MCAT for you, hopefully without needing to go back and take some prereqs. But uh, good good luck, and uh, I wish you the best. Yes, thank you so much. And uh, I hope I hope your listeners know that um, timing doesn't mean anything. It just means you may have to take a different road and learn a little more about yourself. 